Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Compline on this January evening, the third Sunday after Epiphany. I'm glad you've joined us. I hope you have your order of service from email. Let's just take a moment before we begin to quieten our minds in God's presence. Let's begin. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our psalm tonight is taken from Psalm 27. We'll say it responsively by the verse. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? <clears throat> one thing have I asked of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall keep me safe in his shelter. He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling and set me high upon a rock. Even now he lifts up my head above mine enemies round about me. Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. You speak in my heart and say, Seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not your face from me, nor turn away your servant in displeasure. You have been my helper. Cast me not away. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our reading for tonight is the second reading for today, from Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth. You may remember that last week we read the introduction now Paul gets into it. Paul writes, Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also in the house of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Here ends the lesson. Thanks be to God. There's probably no church in the first century that was more dysfunctional than the church at Corinth. We talked a bit about that last week. Paul now begins to address that dysfunctionality, but he doesn't begin with the great sexual immorality that had taken hold in that church. No, he starts with something more basic. Divisions, quarrels, sectarian influences among that church. They obviously had contact with a number of church leaders, and that led to sex. I'm of the de denomination of Paul, or that of Apollos, or that of Cephas, who is Peter. When I taught seminary students, I would take a whiteboard, and I'd put at the top the church. Lovely, pristine whiteboard. 
Then, a thousand years later, 1054, the whole eastern half separates the Orthodox tradition. I write that on, on the board. Then, 16th century, the Reformation happens. But it wasn't just the Reformation. There was the Radical Reformation, the Mainstream Reformation, then the Counter-Reformation. So you look at the Mainstream Reformation, Anglicans, Lutherans, the Radical Reformation, Baptists, Presbyterians, Congregationalists, then the whole Mennonite tradition. And then you keep going, and I kept writing all these new groups on the board. The last I heard, there were over 300 kinds of Baptists. The number of Pentecostal groups is astounding. And lest we Anglicans become proud, if you Google Anglican Church is not in the Anglican Communion, you would be astonished at the number of churches, especially that, that have emerged in the last 10 years. And so the whiteboard would become completely blackened by all these groups. I think you might recall I said a week ago that the greatest sin, according to St. Augustine, was schism, the tearing apart of the body of Christ. Paul says, in order for you to fulfill your purpose, which is to share the good news of the crucified, risen, and ascended Christ, the good news of his spirit that can dwell in you, in order for you to do that, there must be unity. I'm a child of the 1960s. The anthem of the Jesus People Movement was they'll know we are Christians by our love. As people outside view us in our churches, wherever they see us, do they see a people united in love? I think we have some major work to do. And in order for us to share the love of the risen Christ with our world around us, in order to share that love, there must be a love that unifies us in our own churches in our own communities. So Paul starts, unity, the love of Christ that should indeed unite us all, always. The great Keswick revival in England in the 19th century always had a banner above the hall. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We certainly have work to do, for they must know that we are Christians by our love. Amen. Join me in the responsory. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thou God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Join me in this lovely ancient hymn. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Amen. Keep us as the apple of an eye. Hide us under the shadow of thy wings. Preserve us, O Lord, waking and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, thou lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Preserve us, O Lord, waking and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And now at the end of the day, let us remind ourselves of our identity as Christians as we say together the Apostles' Creed. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our fathers, to be praised and glorified above all forever. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, to be praised and glorified above all forever. The Almighty and most merciful Lord, guard us and give us his blessing. Amen. At the end of the day, as we go back over all that's happened, and recognize where we have not measured up, not done as we ought to have done, or spoken as we ought to have spoken, or even thought as we ought to have thought. It is good to come to the end of the day to confess our sins, confident in the wonderful healing grace of our Father. So join me as we confess our sins together. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed through our own grievous fault. Wherefore, we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins and deliver us from all evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to light everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wilt thou not turn again and quicken us, that thy people may rejoice in thee? O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. Don't save, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. The Collect of the Day, this the third Sunday of Epiphany. Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infirmities, and in all our dangers and necessities, stretch forth thy right hand to help and defend us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord our God, source of all goodness and love, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon all who turn to you for help, remembering this night the peoples of Ukraine, Afghanistan, and Iran, and all those forced to flee from the wrath of our oppressors. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. We pray for those who bear heavy responsibilities, for those entrusted to their care. We pray especially for families who care for loved ones who are ill, and for those who care for the elderly, and for those who care for children. May you grant all these the strength to fulfill their ministry hearts of compassion to love those whom they serve, and the peace needed to endure. Amen. 
And I know that there are many among you concerned for those you love and those you know who need God's healing grace. It's so important to pray for them. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, went about doing good and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people, continue, we beseech thee, this his gracious work among us, especially in the lives of, and I invite you now to name before God, those on your heart and mind this night. Cheer, heal, and sanctify the sick. Grant to the physicians, surgeons, and nurses wisdom and skill, sympathy, and patience. And send down thy blessing upon all who labor to prevent suffering and to forward, to forward thy purposes of love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, the comfort of all who are sorrowful and the salvation of those who put their trust in you, in this dying life, give us that peace for which we humbly pray, and finally receive us into the eternal joy in your presence, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now be with us in our homes, O Lord, and let your holy angels dwell therein to preserve us in peace, and let your blessing rest upon us, O thou Lord of love, who lives forever and ever. Amen. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest. For it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Thank you for joining me tonight. And indeed, may the risen Christ by his spirit be very present to you this night and on through the next week. So until we meet again, God bless you. Good night.